What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was the first normal week in terms of software releases in over a month. But at the same time, it really wasn't even normal at all, and things just continued to get weirder with Apple and their release schedule. And I say this because on Wednesday, we got the release of iOS 15.2.1, and iOS 15.3 beta 2, both on the same day. And I cannot remember the last time Apple has released a public release and a beta on the same day at the same time. So with that being said, I've been using both versions over the past few days, and I wanted to give you guys an update on how they've been running. We're gonna talk about when to expect the next major iOS release. We're gonna share your experience from the community poll. And of course, we're going to cover some of the latest Apple leaks and rumors. And before we get into it, I wanted to make sure that if you're watching this video, that you are subscribed. I post these videos every single weekend, and I've noticed that most of you come back every single time, but a lot of you are not even subscribed. So do yourselves a favor and hit that subscribe button down below so you can see my videos more frequently and so you don't miss out on any important iOS updates coming in the future. All right, so let's start off by talking about iOS 15.2.1. So this of course is the latest public iOS release and you can see here, I did end up getting the release notes. I know in my what's new video, I mentioned how I didn't have any release notes. They just populated a lot later than normal, which is also kind of strange. I've never seen it this late for Apple, but we did get the release notes right here. And of course we did cover everything in these release notes in that video. They just didn't show up on this screen initially. But anyways, it's been running perfectly fine for me on my main device here, my iPhone 13 Pro. I've had no issues with performance or battery life whatsoever. And that's because like I explained in my what's new video, the performance or battery life hardly ever changes in a double point update, like a 15.2.1 we're a lot more likely to see a noticeable change when updating to like a point update, like a one point update, like a 15.3, for example, we might see a bigger change in the performance or battery life. Now I wanna start off by talking about what I believe Apple released iOS 15.2.1 for. I don't believe they updated or they sent out this update just for these two very, very minor bug fixes. I don't think, you know, they had to push out an emergency update for that. They could have waited for 15.3 to push out these two minor bug fixes. I think the main reason they released a 15.2.1 was to patch up the now infamous HomeKit bug known as door lock. So this of course, like I mentioned in my what's new video was published online a couple of weeks back before Apple subsequently, of course, patched it with this update. And if you're not aware, this bug worked by renaming a HomeKit device to something with 500,000 characters and it would cause any device that connected to that network to completely freeze and you would not be able to get back into your phone without a full restore. So this was an insane bug and this is a lot more dangerous than I originally thought. And you should definitely consider updating to 15.2.1 for this reason alone, this bug fix alone. Because again, on the surface, it seems, if you just read this right here, it seems like a very minor update that you could maybe wait, you know, a couple of weeks on, or maybe just completely skip. But once you hear about the fix for this door lock bug, it seems like a lot more of an intriguing update. And I think everybody should update for that reason. And then I did also notice a small change in the verbiage in the legacy contact feature. So if we go to our iCloud settings right here, and then to password and security, and then down here at the bottom, you will see legacy contact if you tap on that this verbiage right here has changed and you can see this is ios 15.2 here on the left ios 15.2.1 on the right and you can see some changes in both of these paragraphs right here and then if we tap on add legacy contact you can see each of these sections has also changed the verbiage in there has changed and made it more obvious what this actually does and then we do have a fix for photos sent via iCloud link so they now properly load and I've tested this multiple times now on 15.2.1 you can see this iCloud link right here with a photo properly loads before in 15.2 sometimes there would be no thumbnail right there you would have to tap on the link to actually get to see the picture. So that has been resolved here in messages now with 15.2.1, which is nice if you use this feature. And then of course we do also have a fix for CarPlay, especially for third-party applications. So if you have any issues with CarPlay on 15.2, those should be resolved with 15.2.1. Now, as far as bugs go, I've not noticed a single bug myself on this update. Now, I know some people are gonna have issues with the iPhone storage right here. That is still an ongoing issue that Apple has not fixed yet. But again, I've not had that, and I really haven't had any other bugs aside from the one bug I mentioned 
with the Apple Music just randomly pausing in the middle of a song and it had nothing to do with my network connection or anything. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention is that some people had an issue where red receipts are actually turned on. So you can see here when it says red at a certain time, some people had issues on 15.2 where it would have the red receipts turned on even though they have that setting disabled. Like if you don't want people to see your red receipts, you have that turned off. But for some people, it would still show the other person when they read their message, even when they had that turned off. So there's been no confirmation that this has been fixed in 15.2.1, and I've never experienced it myself. It was not very widespread, but some people did have it. And of course, that's been an issue in the past as well. But if you were having that issue and it's been solved for you, let me know in a comment down below. But I would imagine this is not going to be fixed until iOS 15.3, if I had to guess. Now, moving on to iOS 15.3 beta 2, I have had this installed on my beta testing device, my iPhone 13 Pro Max here, ever since it was released on Wednesday. And if you guys remember my what's new video on that, it was pretty boring. I said how it was a pretty boring update, but there were a couple of fixes and a couple of changes with this second beta. And the first thing has to do with Apple clarifying some verbiage with the iCloud private relay feature. So you can see right here, if you go to your iCloud settings and to the private relay section, we have this now if you are on T-Mobile where it says private relay is turned off for your cellular plan and it says your cellular plan doesn't support iCloud private relay and then it goes on and on but it gives you the warning there that it's because of your carrier why private relay is either not turning on or not working properly and the reason Apple put this in 15.3 is because T-Mobile said that there was a bug in 15.2 that would automatically turn private relay off but Apple denied these claims and basically said that they were the ones that were doing it. And so they added this into iOS 15.3 to help the user understand more that's the carrier having this issue and it's not an iOS bug like T-Mobile you know, described and reported on. So this is pretty interesting. And of course, this is only going to show up if you are on a plan, if you're with a carrier who does not support iCloud private relay like a T-Mobile. Now there was also a fix in beta two for the HomeKit camera thumbnails. So for some people on beta one, they would see a wrong thumbnail or no thumbnail would load on their HomeKit camera. So that has been resolved here with the second beta. And then just like with iOS 15.2.1, the verbiage for the legacy contact has changed here as well. So we have the shorter verbiage right here, more to the point. And when we tap on add, you can see the verbiage has changed for each of these sections here as well. They match up identical to what we got with 15.2.1. And then I'm also having a lot of people ask me about the digital driver's license. And like I've said, Previously, in my last follow-up video, we don't have anything new just yet. We're probably not going to see anything with the digital driver's license until February when it's actually launching in select cities at the airport. And Apple may you know, post something in the newsroom about that. But for right now, we don't have anything new with that. I would not expect anything until February. Now, as far as performance goes here with this second beta, it's actually better than beta 1, which was already excellent, by the way. I mentioned that it was already really good, but it's better here in beta 2. Too. The Geekbench scores are consistently higher than they were on beta one. There's no app crashing. I don't have any issues with the spotlight search. I don't have any issue with the multitasking, really anything at all. My only complaint in general is with Apple Music randomly pausing. I don't have the issue with iCloud storage or any of that. Now, on the other hand, battery life is good, but it's not great like it was in beta one. So beta one had amazing battery life for me, but it seems like there's a minor, minor decrease in battery life with the second beta. So I do the same you know, tasks, the same everyday things on my beta phones every single time I use them. So it's really easy for me to gauge and tell a difference in battery life. So hopefully beta three gets us back on track and gets us back to where we were with beta one, because that was surprisingly the best overall in terms of battery life. But the performance is definitely better here on beta two. So things are really looking good for the final release of 15.3, as long as we keep going in an upward trajectory with the battery life. Now moving on to the community poll, if you go over to my channel here and then go to the community tab right here, you will see the latest poll that I posted right here. I mentioned how 15.2.1 and 15.3 beta two have been out for a few days and how are they running for you so i have two devices so i cannot vote twice i'm just going to say that i have 15.3 beta 2 and it's great no major issues but you can see the results there most people are running ios 15.2.1 and second place is actually people not running ios 15. 
So that is a good sign. A lot of people are updating to 15.2.1. We have a few comments here as well. We're gonna go ahead and read through just a few of these. Very smooth and stable build, battery is decent. Not sure which version you're talking about. Win here is running 15.3 beta 2 on my 12 Pro Max. The performance and battery life are great. This beta series is phenomenal. Yeah, I have to agree there. 15.3 is the best beta so far, 15, no doubt about it. Jonathan here is on 15.3 beta 2, a solid update. Looks like Apple focused on stability before they brought new features, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, exactly. So I think 15.4 is gonna be a pretty loaded update if I had to guess. 15.2.1 on my iPhone 12 works pretty good. The storage bug is still there. And just today I had a wire, a weird bug where it showed a notification, which was blank. Otherwise it's pretty stable with no battery issues. So good to hear there. Aside from that one minor bug, Hassan here has a 12 pro and a 10 S max, both on 15.2.1, both seemingly doing fine. Great to hear there. Hassan was on 15.3 beta two, but battery life was terrible. So I downgraded to 15.2.1. 15.3 beta 2 seems to have better performance, but the poor scrolling performance was still there, which was just annoying. Interesting. Dorian here says he has an issue with blurry thumbnail for albums and the photos app. So that's usually caused by just your photos not finishing up uploading to the cloud. Like if they have not fully downloaded to your phone or to that device, that's usually why you see blurry thumbnails for the albums. Pretty good, but sometimes I'm on YouTube and watching a video when the screen turns black and then I have to refresh the whole video. It does that every once in a while. Interesting, I've not heard of that. Make sure your YouTube app is up to date as well. It's pretty strange. But anyways, thanks to everybody who voted in the poll. It's always great to hear from you guys and how the software is running for you. All right, so now what's next for Apple? So next week is going to be the week of January 17th, and I would expect to see a 15.3 beta 3 next week. So we should be right back on a weekly schedule for these iOS beta. So I would expect that sometime early to mid next week. I think the 19th would be the latest. So sometime from the 17th through the 19th is when we should see a 15.3 beta three. And this past week, I was shocked that there was no Apple watch or Mac OS update, especially an Apple watch update. So those could come over the next few weeks, because of course, we do have the major charging bug for the Apple watch series seven. So hopefully we do see a new update for those Apple watches. And then as far as the final release for iOS 15.3, I would expect that sometime in early February. All right, so now let's move on to some recent Apple news. So first off, Apple is no longer letting users stay on iOS. 14 and just receive security updates instead of updating to iOS 15. So 9to5Mac reported that Apple is backtracking on its decision to allow users to stay on a previous iOS version and only receive minor security updates. Now Apple has not come out and said this publicly yet, but it was pretty apparent when they pulled the iOS 14.8.1 update and are instead forcing users on iOS 14.8 to update to the latest version of iOS 15 with no option to stay on iOS 14 anymore. And I honestly think that this decision makes a lot of sense and it kind of makes things a lot less confusing for the consumer and also for the internal you know, development teams. So we'll have to wait and see if Apple says anything publicly about this. But for now, it looks like you iOS 14 users won't be getting any more security updates, at least for the time being. Now, moving on to Apple's AR VR headset. So we talked about Apple's plan for an AR VR headset and how it could potentially release in Q4 of 2022. Well, now it appears that Apple could be delaying this headset until 2023 due to issues during the development process. And this news comes courtesy of Mark Gurman and Bloomberg, who says that it was initially expected to be announced at WWDC, which is only in a few months, but now it risks being announced in late 2022 and releasing in 2023. We also have some news on the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 15. So if you guys remember, previous rumors mentioned that the iPhone 14 Pro will have a hole punch display with a single little dot up at the top of the screen. Well, it looks like there's actually gonna be more up there than just a little dot. So Ross Young, who is a consultant in the display industry, he tweeted out this. We now believe Apple will have a hole plus a pill design on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max models. The smaller hole will not be invisible. The two hole concept will be unique to Apple, like the notch, not similar to all the pill models from Huawei. So this is apparently what the iPhone 14 Pro will look like with the regular 14s keeping that notch. And then for the iPhone 15, Ross Young says that it is a possibility to have the Face ID fully 
under the display. So we won't have anything on the outside, no hole punch or anything. So I can't wait for that day to come. I don't think that's honestly coming until at least the iPhone 16, like at the earliest, but we'll have to wait and see on that. So there you have it. That is the latest on iOS 15.2.1, iOS 15.3, and of course, those latest Apple leaks and rumors. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up like always. And of course, make sure to subscribe if you've not done so already to keep up to date with all of the latest iOS updates and Apple news. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.